hello all welcome back so next let's try to build one more game on our z board so this particular game is called connect 6 this is a modern board game okay so the laws of the game i will explain in next tutorial or you can check out in wikipedia it's called connect 6 and you can get a lot of uh, online implementation software implementation you can try it out it's very interesting now for efficiently playing this game what we actually need is a mouse so on the screen you can see uh, we are placing some stones black and white stones and you can see a mouse pointer is moving around okay so we are going to place these uh, stones on the board using this mouse now you know our z board uh, it's difficult to directly connect a mouse we don't have any interface we have a USB interface, but uh, very difficult to use. So what we will do is we will make some kind of mouse using our four push buttons, the up, down, left, right push buttons and the center button. So these four push buttons will be used for controlling the direction of the pointer and the middle button will be used for the pressing, the left mouse button press. Okay, uh, so that's what I'm going to discuss in this tutorial, how we are going to build this mouse. How to build this game, we will discuss in the next tutorial. So I started my coding by taking a new Axilite uh, IP core, user-defined IP core. So I'm going to call it Zymouse to indicate this is a mouse for z -board. Okay, so this interface, this is the standard Axil interface, which you know. And we have added these additional signals, the uh, five signals for the buttons, left, right, up, down, and button press which we will connect to the center push button and the interrupt signal so this interrupt signal uh, is an interesting signal here and we will be generating an interrupt whenever our mouse moves or whenever a button pressed okay so we have only one interrupt line but there are two conditions under which interrupt is generated either the mouse is moved or the button is pressed so based on uh, what kind of interrupt the processor can take the necessary action so that's all in the top file so under that in this module okay so we are going for better design style so previously you know we have internal registers here the silence always calls them slave reg 0 slave reg 1 etc but we are going to modify them to make our design uh, better okay so at the top i have defined the addresses of the internal registers that we are going to use so we are going to use actually six registers they are the control register interrupt status register interrupt enable register position register max count register and max coordinate register these are the six registers and these are the internal addresses of these registers so again they are going from zero to five but remember from processor point of view all these addresses should be multiplied by four because each of them is uh, 32 bit four bytes okay now what each register does i have written here so control register that is used for uh, soft resetting our ip so last tutorial we mentioned uh, what is soft reset so if you want to reset only the part of your ip you can use this soft reset so the bit zero of control register is used as soft reset other bits are not used this one interrupt status register so this register will basically say for what reason one interrupt has been generated so as i mentioned before you can have interrupt due to two reasons either the mouse moved or the button pressed so in 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 either case the processor will get an interrupt but he needs to check exactly what caused the interrupt so he will come and read this register and if the bit zero it is indicating uh, interrupt came because a button has been pressed the center button and bit one it is indicating the interrupt came because the mouse has moved okay so that's how the processor understands what caused the interrupt and both can happen simultaneously also button is pressed as well as mouse move that will also generate an interrupt so depending upon different cases the register value can be either one two or three only one of the interrupts happened 
or both happen. Now this one is the interrupt enable register. Okay, so all the standard IP calls, there will be a provision to enable or disable interrupt. Okay, based on that, the processor can work either in interrupt mode or in the polling mode. So if you want to enable interrupt, the corresponding bits should be made one in this register. So again, we have two interrupts here, bit zero, bit one. So if you want to enable button press interrupt, bit zero of this register should be set one by the processor. If you want mouse move interrupt, uh, bit one of this register should be set by the processor. If the bits are kept zero, there won't be any interrupt generated to the processor. He will have to work in polling mode. He will have to continuously read this register to find out whether something happened. Okay. Now this register, this is basically telling what is the current position of the mouse pointer. So he will be giving the current X and Y coordinates. So the lower 15 bits will tell the, what is the X coordinate of the pointer and the upper 16 bits will say what is the Y coordinate of the mouse pointer. So when the processor gets an interrupt, he checks what caused the interrupt. When he finds, okay, interrupt came because of the mouse mood, he should come and read this register to get what is the new position of the mouse. So that's the idea. Now max count register address, this I will explain. Uh, this basically controls the speed at which the pointer is moving. Again, in your uh, standard computer also, you know, you can control how fast the mouse pointer moves when you move the mouse, right? Same idea here, you can control how fast the pointer moves when you press this uh, direction push buttons by setting appropriate values in this register. And uh, this register basically tells the IP what is the maximum X and Y coordinate uh, for the mouse. So this should be set as the maximum X and Y size of your display so that the pointer always remains within the display when you're connected to a monitor. Again, lower 16 bits, the maximum X coordinate and uh, upper 16 bits, maximum Y coordinate. For our 1080p display, our X coordinates will be 1920 and Y coordinate will be 1080. Okay, so that's what uh, at the top we declared, then all the standard interface. Then here you can see instead of calling slave rush 0, slave rush 1, I have renamed them uh, more logically. We are calling them control register, interrupt status register, interrupt enable register, things like that. And uh, here is the logic for writing to those registers. Again, I have simplified it from Xilinx's standard uh, way of writing it. So again, we are comparing the address coming from Axilite address bus. If it is same as uh, control register address, the write data will go to control register, same way for interrupt enable register, max count register, max coordinate registers. Okay, so these are the registers which the processor can directly write. Now, some registers are special case, for example, interrupt status register. Okay, so interrupt status register will be written by both IP as well as the processor. So whenever an interrupt is generated, the IP will set the bits here. Then later processor will read the status register and then he will have to clear the status register so that he gets the new interrupt next time, okay? As we mentioned before. In every case, status registers uh, will be written by the IP, then they should be cleared by the processor. So that's why it is written as a separate always block because uh, we have processor as well as IP writing to this register. So we cannot just put it here. So you can look at the logic here. So this uh, button pulse and mouse move, these are signals coming from the IP. This will be a single pulse signal. So they will become high only for one clock cycle. So if this signal becomes high, the bit zero I am setting to one to indicate button has been pressed. This will pulse whenever the mouse moves in any direction, uh, one clock pulse. In that case, bit one is again set as one. Okay, So this part is from the IP. Now this part is the uh, 
is the access by processor so again you can see if the processor is writing and if the address is same as interrupt status register this is the data coming from the processor i'm not directly writing it to the register instead that is XORed with the current value in the status register and uh, return to the register why is that because as i mentioned before this register uh, can store two interrupt conditions right now when the processor read suppose he saw only the first interrupt and by the time he writes back suppose the second interrupt came okay so when the processor was reading the register conduct was one and by the time processor writes back the register content is three because both interrupt came now if the processor wants to clear the status register he'll be he might be writing back uh, zero to clear the bit zero but if you directly write zero to this register not only bit zero but bit one will also get cleared so the processor will miss the second interrupt condition so to avoid that what the processor should do is when he reads from this register, he will get some value. He should write the same value back to clear that register. So if he finds the register content is one, he should write one back. And due to this XOR operation, one XOR with one will become zero. So the zeroth bit will become uh, zero. But if the second bit is already set, you are basically doing zero XOR with one because the processor is writing zero on that position and the bit value remains as one okay so this is again a standard technique used for clearing the interrupt status register so basically whenever processor wants to clear interrupt status register he writes back the content of the interrupt status register that he read and internally we will be XORing it with the current value of the interrupt status register so that the bits which are not detected by the processor they are not cleared and he can detect it next time so that's the idea okay so that's there and all other logic are standard this is where the read logic again i have modified signing code again simple code uh, based on the address processor is providing the corresponding register value is sent to the processor through the XE light interface. Okay, so under that we have these two logic. One is called a mouse tracker and one is called a single pulse uh, debounce logic. So this debounce logic, uh, you have seen it before in our snake game. This is for avoiding debouncing and we are connecting that middle button, the center button here button press and uh, you can see the logic here this is the same code uh, which we used in the snake game so what he does is he will uh, wait for certain amount of time to make sure this is a real button press so we are going to wait for these many clock cycles so you have to press at least for again 10 millisecond if you press for 10 millisecond this signal will pulse for single clock only for one clock it will become high so this will become high for single clock and uh, that will come here that will get stored in the interrupt status register okay so this bit will become one now let's see how we are actually generating the interrupt so you, here you can see how interrupt is generated so that interrupt status register is ended with interrupt enable register okay so that's why i said interrupt enable should be written uh, as one by the processor if it is not written as one there won't be any interrupt enabled because you are ending these so even if there is an interrupt here the and operation will make it zero okay so if interrupt is enabled when you do an and operation you will get one and this or operation i don't know have you seen it in wait lot before so if you use an or operation like this in front of an array that means it is bit wise or because this is a 32 bit register this is a 32 bit register when you and them you will get a 32 bit value bit wise and operation and here you are basically saying or all of them okay so 
what, what does it mean? If any of the interrupt is high, you will get one here. Okay, so if both interrupts are high, in that case also you will get one here. So that is what is going as the interrupt signal to the processor. Again, this is a standard style of writing, so might be useful to you. So add your interrupt status register with interrupt enable register and or them all together. This is a shortcut. If this was not there, you will have to do and them and store it in some 32-bit uh, register. Then you have to or uh, that register bit 0 or that register bit 1 or like that but this is a shortcut and you can use this shortcut with uh, other operators also you can so that's how the interrupt is generated and that is how the button press interrupt is also generated that's why this special logic is there now all other button press the left right top bottom they are all going to this logic called the mouse tracker Okay, so let's go inside mouse tracker. Inside mouse tracker, first thing is again the logic for avoiding debouncing. Okay, so this debounce. But this debounce is slightly different from the previous debounce. So what happens with the previous debounce is if you keep, uh, keep a button pressed after that predefined value, the output will become high for a single clock. But here that is not the case. Here if you keep a button pressed after this predefined value, your output will become high and it will remain high as long as you keep the button pressed. Okay, so that's the difference. So you can see there is slight difference in the code. So in single pulse it is written counter equal to equal to clock count minus one. Then you make it one, otherwise it's zero. Okay, and this condition will happen only for one clock. So that's why output remains high only for one clock cycle. But here it is written counter equal to equal to clock count, output equal to one. And once the counter reaches this maximum value, because of this logic, the counter will remain at this value, which will make the output remain high as long as the counter is at this value. So the counter will go back to zero only when you release the button so only when you release the button this output will become zero so that's the difference that's why this is called a single pulse debounce because the output will become high only for one clock but uh, this is our normal debounce logic that means the output will remain high after a predefined amount of uh, time and it will remain high as long as you keep the button pressed okay so that's the first logic and all the four push buttons they are going through these four debounces and uh, we get the output <clears throat> now that output is given to another logic called the pulse chain logic and this pulse chain is similar to our single pulse debounce okay so again the logic will look similar uh, so here you can see he is comparing uh, whether counter is some predefined counter max value and this value this is not a constant okay so this value is coming from a register uh, at the top which register the register which is controlling the speed at which the mouse pointer moves this one max count reg address so that value you can control from the processor okay now the larger that value is the slower will be the mouse pointer and the smaller that value is the faster will be mouse pointer so you can see the logic here again this part looks same but this button it is coming after debouncing okay so what he's saying he is comparing this counter equal to equal to max value if it reaches max value it becomes one otherwise it becomes zero now it seems like uh, it is stuck at one once it reaches max value but here logic is slightly different again if you if you compare so here in our single pulse the counter will become zero only when the button is released but here you can see that condition is removed so what happens is the counter it keeps on incrementing as long as its value is less than this maximum value and the button is pressed it is written else counter equal to zero that means when the counter reaches the maximum value even if the button is pressed it will 
roll back to zero and again it will start to up count so because of this condition you will see if you keep on the button pressed it will generate a single pulse after these many clock cycles are elapsed okay okay so this this constant is not used internally but let it be there it came from copy pasting yeah so so he will keep on generating pulses when these many clock cycles have elapsed and how many clock cycles that will be set by the processor by the programmer you can set that value okay so he will keep on generating those pulses after those many clock cycles now after that yeah things are quite simple so you will see we have four such pulse generator and they are connected to the left right top bottom buttons after debouncing and these are their output or pulse and you can see uh, from the name itself what they will be doing so if you keep on pressing the left button the output from here will indicate that you need to decrement the x coordinate okay so after that certain period one pulse will come that is basically telling you need to decrement the x coordinate by one same way if you are pressing right increment x coordinate by one then up button decrement y coordinate by one and down button increment y coordinate by one so those information is used in this logic very simple logic so we have uh, registers here which is basically going to the uh, top module which is basically telling what is the current x and y position of our mouse so whenever we do reset their values are initialized to the maximum x coordinate and maximum y coordinate divided by two so that the mouse pointer will be somewhere in the middle of your display so from where this max x max y will come that is also coming from the top module where this one maximum coordinate address so this register you can see it is connected to max coordinate register and from that max coordinate register it is coming to our mouse tracker maximum x maximum y okay so when we do reset the x and y position are the are at the middle of this x and y maximum x and y now after that uh, when we keep button pressed these increment x increment y pulses will be coming so based on that the current x and y position will be either incremented or decremented as long as they are smaller than this maximum value okay so you cannot go beyond the maximum value that means the pointer is beyond the display that should not happen so if you keep on pressing they will keep on incrementing until they reach the maximum value or the minimum value for that matter and you can also see whenever they are incrementing this ointr this interrupt signal will be pulsing for one clock they are becoming high here but here you can see it is written equal to zero always at postage clock so it will become high on the next clock uh, it will become zero so this will become high only for a single clock so this interrupt is again ultimately connected to our interrupt status register so that's the logic so same way for y coordinate so that's it so that's all in the hardware so we have five push button four of them for controlling the direction you pass them through some debounce logic the output from debounce logic you give to another logic which will generate a single pulse uh, after you press for a certain period of clock cycles so how many clock cycles that you can control from the software now whenever those pulses come you will be incrementing the current x and y position of the mouse here and that will be stored in the registers in the top module you will also generate this interrupt pulse for one clock cycle that will be also stored in the internal register and that will be added with the interrupt control register and it will be given to the processor so that he gets the interrupt that is the logic for movement now for button press you have again a special debounce logic whose output will become one for a single clock cycle after a predefined period of time that time is fixed uh, that is uh, fixed for 10 millisecond for the time being if you want you can change it 
that you have to do it in hardware. There is no software control. Now that single pulse that is also stored in the interrupt status register and again that is added and or together with the interrupt control register and the processor will be getting an interrupt under that case also. Okay, so that's all in our IP design. Then I have packaged my IP, then I have built a system using that IP, this one, Zymouse. There's nothing special in uh, system design is exactly the same, so that's why I'm not going to explain in detail. You just add your IP here and uh, you just connect it to the processor through GP0. And you should also enable the interrupt here in PS. Here you should enable the interrupt, PS to PL interrupt, and you connect the interrupt coming from the IP here. After, after that, just save your talk design, do address assignment, and also need to give the constraints, the five pin constraints for our five buttons, and generate bit string. Okay, so that's all in hardware design. So once bit stream is generated, export it to SDK and launch your SDK. I have already done now SDK okay we will write a driver for our mouse and this time we will write a very proper mouse so I have already written and kept it in my IP core directory so that's why it automatically came here so we have this header file xymouse.h uh, and we have the source code here now again Good design practice instead of uh, using the address offsets directly in your code declare them all of them at the top so these are the addresses of our six register control register status register same way we did it in hardware but only difference is there it was 0 1 2 3 4 here it should be 0 4 8 12 multiples of 4 okay now here these are again constants for interrupt so we will call them interrupt mask so one means we will be enabling only zero interrupt which is button press two means we enable only motion interrupt three means we enable both of them okay now this part i will explain later now this is the structure which is representing our hardware so we are storing our base address here in addition to that we are storing two pointers and I don't know have you seen this before these are pointers to functions okay these are pointers to functions actually they are not pointers to variable so what these functions are doing they are our interrupt service they are actually part of our interrupt service routine I will show you part of interrupt service routine is already written as part of the driver itself but in addition to that if you want to do something more you can do it using these additional functions. So we'll call them the callback functions. Again, in our VDMA, you might have seen it. Uh, Silings, they are also doing the same way. So we have two callback functions, which will be called whenever an interrupt comes. Okay, so this one will be called whenever a motion happens, and this function will be called whenever a button press happens so this is the syntax if you want to declare a pointer to a function uh, this is the return type of the function void this is the pointer to the function so you need to write star something then this is the parameter going to the function so here i am saying a pointer void pointer is going as a parameter to the function this is one style but for silence you will always see they are using this style this is also quite similar using type def this much part you can just type def and you call it by some name and you say that name followed by this name again both are exactly the same okay so both are pointers to functions in addition to that we have function for initializing uh, we have function for enabling interrupt function for setting the coordinate setting that timer which control the speed of mouse and function for starting the mouse 
function for setting up the interrupt controller for the mouse and function for setting the callback functions so all those functions are written here i hope you can read and understand it now at the top it's very simple this is the top file so what we are doing is we are initializing our interrupt controller again this is a standard code this is where we are enabling the interrupt controller as usual but we are not connecting the interrupt service routine for the mouse here okay we are just initializing the interrupt controller and we are connecting the interrupt controller with the driver for the interrupt controller in the operating system so that's all this guy is doing now here we are setting up the interrupt for our mouse so that you can see here we are passing a pointer uh, to our mouse the structure instance as well as the instance to the interrupt controller and the irq number irq number this one is coming from the x parameters dot h okay so what we are doing first uh, as usual we are setting up the priority as well as the sensitivity and here we are connecting our irq number with the interrupt control interrupt service routine now that interrupt service routine i am calling mouse handler you can see here and the isr comes as part of our driver so let's see what is happening here so what he does is he reads the status from that status register inside the uh, ip core here you can see He's reading the status register and he's checking whether bit zero of the status register is set. If bit zero is set, we know it is uh, button press. Interrupt came because of some button press. So he'll pr print like uh, mouse uh, pressed and he will call so called the callback function. Okay, that callback function should be written by you. So here at the top, you can see I have a callback function here. This callback function is for button press and this callback function is for mouse motion. Okay. Now the button press callback function, it does nothing but just prints like a callback function called. Again, just for testing, we are doing print inside ISR, otherwise we will remove it. And motion callback, what it does is Whenever it is called, it will read the address inside the IP where the X and Y coordinates of the mouse are stored. It reads it and from that it separates the X and Y coordinates and it just prints those values. Okay, So these are the two callback functions. Now, the addresses of these functions should be assigned in the structure which is representing our mouse okay so the addresses of these two functions should be stored here and here again i don't know have you seen it in c before but uh, that is a very good feature of c you can have members as pointers to function in such structure and you can uh, store uh, the pointers to the callback functions there and here in the interrupt service routine you can see we are actually calling those functions using those pointers okay so he is getting the interrupt handler as usual he gets a pointer which is a pointer to the structure which is representing the hard hardware and from that structure you can see we are accessing some mouse instance press call back we are basically calling this function using the pointer to the function now that function again look at the syntax its return type is void this is the pointer to the function that function takes a pointer as a argument okay and what am i passing as an argument i am passing the pointer to the structure itself as an argument to that callback function so that here that pointer comes here and using that pointer, I can access the internal registers of our IP. So please read the code. If anything is not clear, you can ask me in the comments. 
I, I will try to explain okay so part of the interrupt handler is in the driver so he does all those things and this is where he is clearing the interrupt status register so you can see the code what he does so whatever status he got from the interrupt status register he writes exactly that back to our ip so that because of the internal xor operation those bits gets clear okay so that is what is happening here and this is a function sets uh, Zymos callback. You can see uh, it is called here. This is the function which takes these addresses, the addresses of these two functions, and assign them to the point is here. Okay, so again, this is very interesting thing. You can see the name of the function is passed as an argument to another function. So what exactly happens is the address of the memory where this function is stored is passed here. So this is a pointer to the function. The name of a function is always the pointer to the function. So the pointer to a function is passed as an argument to another function here. And you need to look at the syntax here. This is the pointer to the structure. This is basically telling what is the handler type because we can have two kind of handler, button press handler and button move handler. Based on that, the, the function coming here should be either assigned to this pointer or this pointer. So that argument helped me to determine what kind of handler I need to assign. And look at the syntax here. So this is how you can pass a function to another function pointer to a function to another function so you need to write return type of that function so void type then a pointer you can write whatever but you need to put star followed by something then the arguments taken by this function so the argument taken by that function is void star something it's taking a void pointer so this part should exactly match with the function that we are passing here so we are passing test move callback so look at the function here return type is void this is the function and it takes one argument which is a void pointer so it should exactly match here void pointer to the function and the argument taken by that function so we are taking it and we are checking what is the handler type so at the top you can see i am passing move handler again they are two constant zero and one two constants so move handler and press handler for move handler i am passing this one test move callback this guy and for press handler i am passing this one test press callback so this function takes the pointer to those functions and he is storing this one the address to that function inside that structure so whenever one interrupt comes, this interrupt service routine is automatically invoked. He automatically reads the status. He checks what created that interrupt. Based on that, he automatically calls those callback functions. Okay, so he calls either button press one or button move one. After that, he clears the interrupt inside the IP. So this is exactly how it works in our VDMA controller also. You need to provide this callback function. If you don't provide this callback function, your interrupt service routine won't work because if you don't give them, these pointers will be initialized to null. They will have address zero. So he will try to execute some code from address zero and uh, nothing works. Okay. So inside callback function, as I mentioned before, if button is pressed, we just print button pressed if button is moved we read the current coordinate from the ip and we indicate that current coordinate now uh, later when we do that game development when we press the button we may really want to do something we may want to play some stone at some location that code we will add similarly when we move the uh, button we may have to display the pointer on the screen something like that on the monitor that code we will add here so currently we are not using the display or only on the terminal we'll just print uh, what happened 
okay so that's it now after that yeah run configuration uh, check all of them i have exported bitstream also check this one also and uh, keep your tara term and just run it Okay, so when the IP starts, some pulses are coming automatically. I need to check why it is so. He actually called the ISS. I didn't press any button, but uh, two times uh, mouse move interrupts came that I need to check. After that, it's fine. Now, nothing happens as long as uh, you don't press any button. So in the main code, you can see once he does all those things, he's stuck in this while loop forever and uh, something will happen only when some interrupt comes okay so now i'm going to press that center button that middle button and whenever i press it you can see he's printing mouse pressed press call back called and there is a one here also so that is partly coming from here so he is reading the status register so he got one as the status and based on that he printed mouse pressed and he also called the callback function corresponding to mouse press which is this function and this function is printing press callback called okay so that's what you are seeing here so each time you press the center button once this print will come if you press it and hold it nothing happens because of our logic it generates a single pulse for one button press now let me try to press that uh, right button so you can see when i press it and if i press it and hold it a lot of interrupts are coming and you can see the status is two and he's printing mouse mood that is coming from here then he is calling the callback function, which is this one, and it is printing move callback call, and he is reading those internal register, and he is printing the x and y coordinate. Now, if I keep on pressing the right button, you can see after 1920, which is the maximum x value, no more interrupts will come because of our logic. But if I press the left button now, yeah it coming same for up button and down button also okay so that maximum x and y value we have set here same as the uh, display value x and y and that information we are writing to our ip here set coordinate thy mouse so that's why he's not going beyond these values he's storing those values in that internal register now uh the speed at which the pointer will be updated you can see here that value is this times the clock frequency which is basically five millisecond that means if i keep pressing more than five millisecond he will increment the coordinate okay so if you change this value say one that means one second only after pressing it for one second he will increment the coordinate so you will see like uh, the interrupts come less of often so i keep it pressed you can see it's increasing only one seventy second even if i keep pressed okay so again this value is stored in that uh, internal register so practically when i tried five millisecond it, it looks nice so that's why let's keep it at uh, five millisecond or if you wish you can change it okay so that's about software so i'm putting everything in git go through it if if any doubt you can ask me in the comments but uh, one thing to remember this is the proper way of writing driver okay so here it's uh, written in, in the proper way uh, nothing is hard coded you declare all the constants here and you declare the structure here and you declare the functions here in the header file 
and this is the corresponding source code uh, one thing that maybe i haven't written is the function for disabling intra that you can easily write now there is function only for enabling intra now if you write a function to disable the intra what you have to do is you have to write zero to that register which is controlling the intra right intra uh, control intra enable register so to this address 8 you just have to write zero to that corresponding position okay so thank you so in next tutorial we will use this uh, ip and this driver to develop our connect 6 game